Can we do clean keto shopping at Costco for $200 per month, picking all the right things best that we can, keeping it within that budget, but still keeping it clean and not getting total garbage. Let's go ahead and head on in. I bet you we can find some really good, fun, clean things. The goal with this whole clean keto thing is we're trying to keep it with Mediterranean principles. So when you do keto, most people don't exactly follow Mediterranean principles, meaning they don't keep it lean, they don't keep it with healthy fats, they don't use the monounsaturated fats, the good healthy polyunsaturated fats, they end up using a lot of just the saturated fats and kind of the garbage. So there's plenty of clean things, I've done plenty of videos, we're just adding a sort of budgetary challenge to it this time too. Let's see. $4.99 a pound for good, clean, organic chicken breast, but that's not that much. We've got two breasts. Let's see, we've got four ounces is gonna give us about 24 grams of protein. So four ounces would be a decent serving. So in this case, we have 4.62 pounds. So that's gonna be roughly four servings per pound. So we got 16 servings. So we get about 16 meals with this for $23. Mm, I might have to go non-organic in this case. Chicken is <laughs> okay. Chicken is usually just fed soy. It's usually just fed garbage anyway. So it's, although I would prefer to go organic, it's not necessarily going to be the end of the world if I can't. So here we go, 289 per pound. Still air chilled, which doesn't really mean a whole lot. Still gonna be the same, 24 grams of protein per four ounce serving. So let's just err on the side of caution and say yeah, four or five ounces per serving. In this case, we have seven pounds for $20. So say seven, okay, we're gonna go seven times um, four. There's four four ounce servings in a pound. So that's 28 meals in this case. So that makes a lot more sense. Now, anyone can do math and find that this is cheaper, but there's certain things that you go organic on and certain things that you don't. Typically, I would recommend organic chicken, but we're trying to do what we can in the best budget, not a bad price. And you might be wondering, why don't I get chicken thigh? It's higher fat. Well, if we're gonna go with chicken, which is a lower quality protein, I wanna at least get the leanest possible one. I don't wanna have chicken that's got a bunch of the chicken fat on it where most of the toxins hang out. All the, uh, you know, just the garbage that they feed the chickens is gonna come out in the fat. That means just the different, uh, well, they don't usually give chickens antibiotics. Okay, that's, believe it or not, if it says antibiotic free, it's kind of funny because they don't typically give chickens antibiotics or they don't typically give chickens hormones because they haven't given chickens hormones in 50 years. So. Anyhow, point is, that's why we got this one. Do we have a price here? That makes it a little bit tough. I want to say these guys are 20 bucks. I think so too. Yeah, I think they are 20 bucks. So in this case, we've got 21 grams in a four ounce serving, 16 servings per container. So we got 16, 16 meals out of this too. So we got 28 meals and we got 16 meals. You know, people might be saying, I'm not gonna consume four ounces. Well, yeah, you might, but you might not. And the thing is, the nice thing on keto is you're so leucine sparing, all the beta hydroxybutyrate, the ketones that are in your body, they spare leucine, which means you don't break down protein as much, which means you actually don't need to consume as much if you don't want to. I like to consume a good amount of protein because I'm working out a lot, I feel like I need it. But if you are really doing keto and you have high enough levels of ketones, your body is not breaking down the protein in a catabolic way. I'm considering getting two of these because that would really satisfy a lot of my protein needs. But let me see what else they have. I'm also, from a budget standpoint, I feel like ground beef is nice because it's super easy and just convenient. It saves me a lot of time and time costs is something to pay attention to as well. Yeah, here's the, yeah, exactly. Ground beef, here's the same, here it is again, but there's the actual price, so $4.99 a pound. So that's not bad. Okay, then we've got this organic ground turkey Ooh, that's pretty pricey. Sixteen forty-nine for yeah, five five forty-nine a pound total. But if I at least wanted to change it up, not the biggest fan of ground turkey, but okay. Here's something to know: vegetarian diets for chickens and for turkey are not good. Okay, they're designed to be eating. They're omnivores. They're not supposed to just be eating vegetarian diets. It actually shortens their lifespan, and it decreases the actual overall nutrient profile. No antibiotics ever. Um, that's a little bit of a surprised ground turkey. You don't see that as much, but free range doesn't mean anything. Free range just means that they have access to going outside. It doesn't mean that they're actually on a range. Uh, it is organic, which helps me out a little bit. And just for the sake of diversity, but I'd only get, okay, so we've got how many pounds total here? 
two, three pounds with a four ounce serving getting us 23 grams of protein. Okay, so we've got 12, 12 meals here. I guess if we were to aim, uh, you know, make our eggs work out and everything like that too, we could actually get enough meals here. So let's try this, let's get this guy. I'd rather double up on the beef. It just makes more sense. The ground turkey is just lower, oh, I don't know, but that's so much leaner. I will get this. <laughs> See if there's any good, clean quality cheese we can get real quick. Clean keto is all about the hard cheeses, all about the hard, the aged, and the Gouda, all right? And the sheep. The hard, the aged, the Gouda, and the sheep. If you're like, hey, I can only pick out so much cheese because I only have so much money to spend, I would usually lean towards Gouda. Now, there's some of the other cheeses in the regular aisle, like the non-fancy cheeses that you're gonna pay a lot less money for, but we're doing clean keto, and I want you to be able to get some aged, good quality cheeses here. This stuff is the jam, and that's a good price. Pecorino Romano. It's the best cheese that you can get. It's the most ketogenic friendly cheese and this is a really good price. And if you've ever had it on eggs or mixed with ground beef, a little of this Pecorino Romano in there, it is a winner. Okay, so for $7, I'm going to get the most ketogenic cheese. Cheap milk is ketogenic because it's high in MCTs, but it's also just a better case in protein blend. So I'm going to get this. Okay, so we've got $20, $20. So that's 40, 16, we got 66 bucks plus another seven, we got about 70, $73 we've spent already. But we've got uh, most of the expensive stuff done. And now we just move into the novelty items, so to speak. I am a tremendous fan of smoked salmon. I don't know if it's gonna make our cut here. Um, yeah, not at that price, we just, we can't swing it. It is perfect for a Mediterranean style keto diet though. Just make sure, as I always say in my videos, go for the sockeye, not the Norwegian. Here's what we'll do. We'll go and we'll do some more shopping. And if we have some room in the budget afterwards, then we can come back and have some more fun stuff. I wanna make sure I get some good quality veggies though. Let's do this. Avocados are not something that you have to worry about getting organic. It doesn't matter as much because of the hard skin. So believe it or not, it's not something you have to spend the extra money on. So in this case, 549, 91 cents per avocado versus $1.24 per avocado. Let's see, if I had a half of avocado a day or a quarter of an avocado per day, this would still only get me, wouldn't get me all the way through. I think it's worth it to do this, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go for two of these. I think it's absolutely worth it, considering how much avocado you really should be eating on a clean keto diet. And the nice thing is, you can put them in the refrigerator and they will last a little bit longer. We're about 80-ish dollars into our budget right now, so we have $120 left that we can spend. Things are amazing. There's 14 wraps. They just make a really good lunch item for keto. Look at these, the ingredients are so simple. Cage-free egg whites, cage-free egg, cauliflower powder, olive oil, sea salt, xanthan gum spices, citric acid. I, I can't remember the price on these. I wanna say they're like 10 bucks, but I will tell you, they will make keto easier and there's some costs that you have to pay just to have good adherence and to be able to sustain the diet. So I'm gonna get these, I'm gonna think they're about 10 bucks, so I'm gonna say I have about $110 left to spend. Oh man, it's cold. A lot of my fruits and veggies, I end up getting uh, uh, frozen because you can. You don't have to get them fresh and they're gonna last longer frozen. And it's usually better quality as far as uh, the nutrient profile just because they're flash frozen. But let's see what they have here. That's not a bad price for Brussels sprouts. Super terrific vegetable because it is a cruciferous vegetable, but also very high in sulfurethane, very high in these specific nutrients that don't just help out gut motility and help you out with digestion, but also help you out from sort of a, I don't wanna say, it's not really detoxification, it's more so it helps support your body's natural ability to. So sulforaphane is sulfur producing, which is going to help your body produce glutathione, which is a master antioxidant produced in your body. Uh, runs a lot of different functions as far as antioxidants are concerned in your body. That's a good price, but it's probably not gonna get me too far. You can microwave them, which is great. Put a few Brussels sprouts into a microwave, cover a microwave for four to five minutes, add butter, other toppings. So this actually is good. I just don't think that this would last me a month. I'd have to get probably two and then heat them not all that often. So let's go ahead and let's grab one. Romaine hearts. I'm not a big romaine guy. Not a lot of nutritional value there. Organic spinach. This is, wow, that's actually a good price for spinach. Yeah, that's a really good price for spinach. Now there are some oxalates in spinach, which means that technically they cancel out the nutrients that are in there because the oxalates prevent the absorption or in, at least limit the absorption of some of the nutrients. The iron that you get out of spinach is not gonna do you much good. It's not the heme iron that you're gonna get in meat. So don't be misled. Don't think that this iron is going to actually have a function biochemically within your body. It has to go through lots of different conversion processes. 
But once you cook it with eggs or something like that, it becomes very powerful and it has a lot of nutritional value, a lot of chlorophyll. So spinach is good to go. Uh, you want to get organic spinach, so I am going to spend the money for that. There's some broccoli there, but we're going to go the frozen route for broccoli. I'm really proud of how clean this cart looks already, right? This is what keto should look like. This is what clean keto absolutely should look like. All right, if we really wanted to kick the budget down a notch, we could go to the frozen chicken. I'm not opposed to that, but if we can get fresh, it's definitely going to be better. Just because it says 100% grass fed doesn't mean it's grass finished. It doesn't mean that it's perfect. It just means at some point it was probably given grass pellets. Raised without antibiotics or hormones, that doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot either. Wild caught Alaskan salmon burgers. Cut a salmon, ah, see, we see that vegetable oil there, that soybean oil, canola oil. Yeah, we don't want that, definitely not. Take literally like the best fatty acid that you could possibly get from a fish and put a bunch of soybean oil in it, it's terrible. That soybean oil is a very fragile fat. It's called a polyunsaturated fat. We don't really want that. Tilapia, we want to avoid. Cod is great. And the frozen cod, I know here, comes from Alaskan Leader, which is a really good, really good company that sources out of Bristol Bay in Alaska, really good quality stuff. So I know for a fact the frozen cod is really, really good. So if you're a fish person, I know that's not the best price that you're gonna find on cod, but it is really good stuff. So 18 bucks and we get 30 grams in a six ounce serving. And we have about five, so, cost per serving is not too great, so we're gonna have to pass on it. Here we go. Bang for the buck, shrimp. Okay, scallops, shrimps, shellfish in general. Such a tremendous, tremendous protein profile and mineral profile, and absolutely 100% a Mediterranean keto dish that I would recommend. So, or shouldn't say a dish, but a food, food item. Okay, eight shrimp is gonna give you 20 grams of protein. We get 10 servings for 15 bucks. Now I know it's farm raised, but considering what options we have here, let's see. Okay, we can get wild, Negocino, wild scallops, farmed white shrimp. I think we're still gonna go this route. Some people may beat me up on it, but Costco does a pretty good job of making sure that they get clean stuff, so I trust Costco with that. And now just to kind of count down, when we, before we went into the produce section, Okay, we had about 105 bucks left there, 100 bucks left here, and now we just spent another 15 bucks. So we're pretty set on protein. Let's get a little bit of fruit, just because you can have small amounts of fruit on keto, if we can find something that's relatively inexpensive here. Ah, you know what? That's a cool find. That's gonna save me a lot of effort. So I could put these in smoothies, I could just defrost them and put them in my eggs, I could defrost ah. So I'm gonna put these fresh avocados back and go for this, because they do put a little bit of ascorbic acid, citric acid, just to promote the color retention. But again, they don't have to be organic, so I'm not worried about that. And that's just a great find. Mm -mm. And that ends up costing me just about the same amount as these two would have caught me, cost me. Three pounds. It just makes it so that way I'm not gonna waste them because we know how avocados are. So between broccoli and cauliflower, you have two cruciferous vegetables that are very, very similar as far as the active ingredient or active components, I should say, uh, and how they're gonna respond within your body. This is kind of cool because you get these little rice servings. It makes it a little bit more fun. So that way we could use my Brussels sprouts. We could like, you know, mix them in with the rice. So we could get this instead of the broccoli. And we're getting organic, which is great. Cauliflower is something you typically wanna get organic. Uh, the broccoli, we're probably just not gonna use that much. We're much more likely to use the rice cauliflower. I'll probably even make a dish with this tonight and just have a little fun with it. So let's get that, and we're looking fairly decent on our veggies. I feel like we could probably go through more veggies than this if we really wanted to try. This is a killer price. So if you're looking for something on the go, the problem is they're not exactly what we're looking for. Um, so we have, there's 12, 16 two packs, 12 grams of protein per pack, so you get two eggs. So it's not the highest amount of protein, but it's a terrific snack because in each one you're gonna have, each pack, you're going to have 68 calories, okay? Or each pack's like you're gonna have two eggs, so you're gonna have about 140-ish calories. That is a pretty solid little snack or something that you could add to a salad or add to a meal. And for $10, you're getting a pretty darn clean item here. The issue is, although they're organic, they're cage-free, and cage-free doesn't mean anything. In fact, in California, 
they have to be cage free. All that means is they're not in individual cages called battery cages. They're in just packed little areas. So I don't think it's the best thing considering what we can find in the dairy section where we actually get some eggs. So let's head on in there. Oh, this is kind of new. So they had cage-free egg whites before, but as we know, that doesn't really mean much. Now we have organic egg whites. The thing is, is the organic doesn't really matter because the egg white is just albumin. Most of what's going to matter is going to be the yolk, if it's going to be organic. But also, organic doesn't mean much with eggs because they still end up just feeding them the same thing. Soy, it's just organic soy. Here's where we get kind of interesting. They have a really good price on the organic pasture-raised eggs. Remember, pasture-raised is what you want. Free-range just means they have access to outside. This is a good price because we get 24 eggs. So we're gonna eat these for a month. And remember, I'm not a fan of eating tons and tons of eggs. I have maybe three eggs every other day or so. So in this case, we have, well, 24 eggs. So we could probably do four eggs. We could, we'd probably be fine with just one pack of eggs. Considering, wow, I don't know what that was. Considering how many different uh, food items we have here and different things that we can do. And especially if you're gonna do some intermittent fasting or anything like that, then you're gonna be in great shape because you can skip breakfast a couple days. Um, I don't see a price on these anymore though. Must be in an area where people just uh, don't really look at prices. I wanna say they're about 10 bucks again too. So we're down to having about 80 bucks left. Let me go put these other avocados back. You know what? I'm gonna get two of those eggs because I feel like that's something that people could actually get some good use out of. That is pretty expensive for butter. So we have some other things that we can cook with. We don't need to use the butter. Eggnog is keto, right? Oh, I've got some good prices on Greek yogurt. This is something if you're doing keto, if you're gonna get your dairy in, I do recommend that you get some good quality Greek yogurt in. And this is a granite Greek yogurt, plain, it's non-fat. There's seven grams of carbs, which is fairly high, but at least this one's organic. Um, but you're not gonna be having yourself more than like one serving of it. 18 grams of protein, and we have eight servings. So we have now have eight more protein servings that we've got here. Now this is a non-fat one, and it looks like, yeah, the Faya one is non-fat too. Let's see, let's see what the difference is. 0.123 per ounce, 0.125 per ounce for the Faya. So this one's cheaper and it's organic. So with the ketogenic diet, you do wanna be implementing as much in the way of probiotics as you can. So I recommend if you're starting the keto diet, you should probably getting some yogurt, some cottage cheese, some stuff like that in. That way you're giving yourself a little bit of a jump start. Some of the lactobacillus that's in here, in fact, let's see what strains are in here. We've got Streptococcus, yeah, Lactobacillus bulgaricus, and Lactobacillus acidophilus, and Lactobacillus casei. So Lactobacillus strains are very widely associated with good metabolic function. So there's a lot more that goes into this than just having a little bit of protein and a little bit of calcium, right? You're getting a big effect. You're good, dude, we're the ones filming, it's all good. So what were the benefit is coming more so, in my opinion, from the probiotic effect. So obviously you have all these benefits that are coming there. So that's why that's gonna be in the mix, not because of anything else other than that, and because it tastes dang good if you wanna mix it with a little bit of uh, stevia or monk fruit. This is also something that I would typically want to have in here, but I think for the sake of budget, I will hold off on cold brew and just go with regular coffee this time. This is where things start to get difficult because it gets expensive in this area, but it really makes you think about, well, what should I be spending my money on? What, because so much of this stuff, I could spend 20 bucks on tea, I could spend 10 bucks on sweetener. It just goes so, so, so quick. And just to let you know, the stuff like this is where I would recommend utilizing Thrive Market, okay? Because they are a big supporter of my channel, but Thrive Market is where you get all your pantry staples and everything like that for keto, for paleo, for vegan, for vegetarian, whatever your diet is, and you can sort by diet category, and then it gets delivered to your doorstep. It just makes perfect sense as far as being able to get this stuff and get it really conveniently you know, brought to you, right? And a lot of times it ends up being even less expensive in the grocery store. So you're not having to buy it in these huge quantities. It's less expensive in most grocery stores and you can choose the foods that you want based upon diet. So most of my keto goodies I get through Thrive, um, I 
do videos about them all the time. I've done day in the life things where I cook the foods that I get. Anyhow, highly recommend them. And there's a special link down below in the description. So if you haven't checked out Thrive, I highly, highly recommend that you do. Yes, I found them. Here we go. Okay. Check out this value. <laughs> okay, $6.69 for a huge bag of probably the best tasting pork rind. So when you compare this to getting a really sweet snack, you've got something that's fried pork skins, salt, a little bit of coconut palm sugar, but we're talking not even enough to move the needle on the carbohydrate. We're talking such a small amount. What is so important about pork rinds is you want to make sure that they're rendered in their own fat. So in this case, pork is rendered, fried in rendered pork fat. So that's not rendered, it's not cooked in soy, it's not cooked in canola or anything like that. It's just cooked in its own fat, which is exactly what we want because the fatty acid profile of the pork itself is not bad. Usually pork quality isn't really good, but that's where 4505 comes in because they have really good quality pork. In fact, humanely raised without added antibiotics. Between Epic and 4505 brand, 4505 is the way to go. So they are going to be in all Costco stores in January. So I want everyone, if you have a Costco, go there in January and get some of these 4505 brand pork rinds. And they need our help with this, okay? Because what's going on is they're gonna be in certain stores and it's up to us to go in there to buy them. And that's what's gonna tell Costco, hey, yes, we need to keep this item because people are buying it and people love it. So I'm gonna buy some as a matter of principle, but they're also a very, very good price. So even if they don't fit your $200 budget, I'll let myself go $6 over because I'm gonna support them and support that cause. So also the cool thing is, if you can't get to a Costco and you can't get a good quality pork rind like this, Thrive Market has 4505 on their website too. So everything I talked about with Thrive Market, you can get the 4505. So, Epic, ep I shouldn't say Epic because that's a competitor. Epic find, 4505 find at Costco. I'm stoked they have it at this one. So in January, it's gonna be in all the Costcos. Okay, good. Here we are at Nut Butters. Let's see. So this has got cashews on. The thing that's a bummer is that the first ingredient is cashews. Not the biggest fan of cashew butter uh, when it comes down to keto because cashews are very high in phytic acid. So again, we kind of cancel out a lot of the absorption of these. It's a great blend because I love that it has the flax seeds, the chia, the omega-3s in there. But what good is that if you start out with like one of the most omega-6 rich, phytic acid rich nuts, that's basically canceling it out. So what about moving on to almond butter in this case? This is just one ingredient, roasted almonds. Makes it nice and simple. Yes, it's still almonds, which aren't going to be as good as say like macadamia nut butter, but it's also gonna be a little bit cheaper too. So perhaps this is what we go for. All right, so here's what's cool. We have all these different oils that we can choose from. We've got avocado oil, we've got olive oil. What do you choose? Olive oil, avocado oil, very, very similar. Avocado oil has much of a similar fatty acid profile as uh, olive oil. The difference with avocado oil is it's better for cooking because it can handle a high heat. Okay, it's not as high in the antioxidants as olive oil is. It doesn't have as much of what is called hydroxytyrosol. It doesn't have quite as much of the good stuff as far as antioxidants go and the phenolic compounds, but it does have um, the oleic acid, which avocado oil has too. I do know from the recent UC Davis study that Chosen Foods is one of the cleanest, one of the only avocado oils that does not have soybean oil mixed into it or is not soybean oil altogether. And you may think, oh, it's in a spray, it's in a propellant that can't be good. No, it's totally fine. There's only one ingredient, avocado oil. It's just pressurized so that it works. So here's the thing, we have a little bit of a conundrum. Oils aren't the cheapest thing. Do we get just a little bit of avocado oil spray and that way we can spray it on our food, we can also cook with it? Or do we get a jug of olive oil, bang for the buck? Because the Kirkland Signature olive oil, or even this one, the California blend, as long as we know where it's harvested, that it's cold extracted, and we know a date, we know it's good, and in a dark bottle. So for $9, we can get a liter of olive oil that's gonna last us quite a long time, or we can get roughly a month's supply of avocado oil. What I would recommend is rotating it out. Okay, this is gonna last you way more than a month. So for the sake of a budget, it's hard for me to tell you this is going to work on $200 per month because it's gonna last you probably a half a year. This might last you about a month. So budget-wise, I think it's a better move to go for this one, but I feel like this is a cooler item. So either way, let's go ahead and let's do for the sake of budget today, to keep it under $200, I'm actually gonna go with the chosen foods because yes, that is more bang for the buck, absolutely. 26 cents per ounce versus 62 cents per ounce. But you guys are gonna rip me a new one if I end up going far over $200 today. Uh, this, is, this is something I should probably grab. 
I think it's somewhat instrumental because not only are we gonna get the lycopene from the tomatoes, but it's gonna allow us to actually cook some of our stuff up with something tasty. And this is a really good marinara that only has tomatoes, onions, olive oil, sea salt, garlic, basil, spices, and calcium chloride, which is really just a mineral. And this would allow us, this would give us much more than just a month, right? If we were using it sparingly, I use it a lot. So that way I could take my beef, I could make some bolognese, I could take my ground turkey, I could make a lasagna, I could make a blend, a hash with this. It's so, so many things that I could do. So it's a very, very universal and it kind of covers a lot of my bases with seasonings and everything like that. Plus, what do you know? It's quite Mediterranean, right? It fits the vibe. And we've got to have some good quality mayo, okay? So again, this is a superfood when you ask me, if you ask me. This is, wow, what is this one? I haven't seen this one anywhere, but... Nine dollars for this is a little bit steep. Uh, it's a great price for the Primal Kitchen Mayo, but it's a little bit steep in the sense that uh, what I need for this month. However, I'm going to get it because I feel like it's going to last me quite a while and I feel like it's going to be something that is important to get. Getting your omega-3 values in is so, so critical. And unfortunately, a lot of the foods that I've gotten today are not super high in omega-3. I just am lacking omega-3s here, and that's everything that the Mediterranean clean keto is all about. So what am I supposed to do? I don't have a lot of omega-6s, but I definitely don't have a lot of omega-3s. So typically what you wanna do is you wanna have a good ratio of omega-6 to omega-3. It's not about how many omega-3s can you possibly get, it's about how much omega-3 do you have in contrast or comparison to your omega-6s. So here we have two different forms of sardines. Both are in olive oil, Generally, I would recommend them in water, but in this case, it's kind of nice because we get them in olive oil, so it makes it like a full-on meal, 200 calories with this. Mix it up with a, an egg or something like that, and you're in a good, good position. What's gonna be the difference? Almost the exact same price. 38 cents per ounce, 38 cents per ounce. We have olive oil, sardines, and salt in this one. And Wild Planet, we have sardines, organic extra virgin olive oil, water, sea salt, and aqueous natural smoke. I'm gonna go with this because the organic olive oil is going to take the cake. And technically it's a little bit cheaper. So I know you're thinking, you just spent $10 on these. Like, is that really even worth it? Like, what the heck? Yes, it is worth it. You can sub it for something else. If you're not going to do the sardines, go for the tuna, just get chunk light, don't get albacore, even though albacore seems like it's higher quality, it's not. It's higher quality, but it's higher mercury too. So when I look at snacks with fat in them, I weigh out a few things, right? So in this case, we have like the 4505. I've got 14 servings of 80 calories. Okay, with moon cheese, I have 10 servings with 170 calories. So caloric density, I get more with the moon cheese, but I think I'm gonna get more nutritional value out of the pork rind. So I'm trying to weigh out savory snacks here and what's really worth getting. Then with the Wisp, which I would argue as a better, higher quality cheese snack than the Moon Cheese, uh, I'm gonna get 10 servings again, also with 150, uh, so a little less caloric density. So a least amount of calories coming in from this one, which isn't necessarily what I'm looking for. I'm trying to last a month on $200. So I could always get some cheese snacks and still, in fact, I will. You know, I, I think the 4505 has actually done a little bit of partnership with Wisps, because I've seen they have some Actually, you might find this interesting, JR, my videographer. They sent me some earlier and they have, <laughs> they have wisps in their 4505 bags now, like a blend. But anyhow, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to get some of these Parmesan wisps. And then I think I'm probably just about out my budget, but what else could I really get? I've got everything that I could possibly need unless I just wanted to get like some protein powder or something. But the protein powder is a tough one because that gets a little bit more expensive and I feel like you almost need to have a separate supplement budget for that. The only one thing I wanna look at really quick is I wanna see if they have any nuts that might work for me here. Okay, when it comes down to decisions, decisions, decisions on a budget and you're having to narrow it down, don't just get nuts for nuts sake because they are not 
equal. You don't be like, oh, this week I'm going to get pecans. This week I'm going to get almonds. This week I'm going to get cashews. It's like completely different worlds, completely different worlds. The one that's going to be the least negative impact is going to be a macadamia nut. They're also the most expensive, but it's a nut that if you munch on, you're at least not going to throw off your omega profile, okay? Because most of the fats that are coming in from macadamia nuts are coming from what's called a palmitoleic acid or an omega-7. There's very, very little omega-6s, but also very little omega-3s in macadamia nuts. However, 17 servings, 230 calories, 25 grams of fat. So we could safely say you have one serving every other day, and you're going to get a good amount of calories, or you have a half a serving, and you're really good to go that way. So this is such a killer price. Now, the 0.97 means that they're closing this item out. I am gonna get these because I think they're worth it. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip the almond butter. I'm gonna put the almond butter back. So we're gonna take a hike over there, and I'm gonna get these macadamia nuts instead. It just, it's one of those things where I have to make a decision, have to make a judgment call, and it just makes way more sense for me to get that instead of this. I don't need the almond butter. All this is gonna do is probably <laughs> make me sit down with a spoon and eat too much of it. So let's put it back, and in the meantime, we'll see if we find anything else that we might have missed. Just for the sake of making sure that I show everyone what you could get, let's say you have a little bit more of a budget than I do. Maybe, see, maybe you have $220, $230, and you wanted to pick out some protein powder. Let me show you the right protein powder to get to, because I feel like there is a time and a place for it. Post-workout, possible breakfast replacement. Um, you know, what I would typically do is if I'm in a pinch, I'll have a protein shake and I'll combine it with like a little bit of fat from maybe some avocado or maybe some macadamia nuts or some 4505 or some wisps, right? They don't have really good plant-based protein powders here. I'm a big pea protein guy. When it comes down to being a meal replacement, I strongly prefer pea protein over whey protein. But this is a very good deal on their whey protein. I talk about this one so many times in so many videos. I'm sure you've seen me talk about it before, but the whey protein isolate is what we want. It's protein isolated from the whey. This one says it's isolate, but it's isolate primary source. There's also other stuff mixed into it. So not what we're going for here. So 30 bucks, this is going to give you 40 servings. I hope you're not having like more than that a month. Okay, I think this is more like a two month supply because I certainly don't have a protein shake every day. I'll have one, I, I work out fasted. I usually don't have a protein shake after my workout. I usually am not eating until later. So a protein shake is usually something for when I'm in a pinch. So 15 to 20 times per week uh, per month at the most. So this is really like $15 a month if you wanted to factor that in. Let's go ahead and check out and it's gonna be a drum roll. Let's see if we made it on the price. Remember guys, if you are a fan of my channel, do us a solid and go to Costco in January and get some 4505, okay? Seriously, we gotta make sure that good brands are getting into Costco, otherwise we end up just left with a bunch of garbage. These popped open, so we're not gonna get these after all, but we'll factor it in. They were $4.99, so we'll add it to the budget. Um, and uh, I don't think I actually need them because I have them at the house. I was gonna give them to probably JR. <laughs> so we'll just factor it in. So, Romano Rongo. Oh, wow. Nice. All right. So, technically I would have been at 208, but this is pretty awesome. Okay. And remember, as far as Thrive Market is concerned, you can get 4505 at Thrive Market. You can get the Primal Kitchen Mayo at Thrive Market. You can get the Wisps at Thrive Market. You can get the Sardines at Thrive Market. You can get these at Thrive Market. You can get these at Thrive Market. So, if you don't have a Costco nearby, you can get a lot of the non-perishable stuff through Thrive Market using the link down below. Absolutely remember to try out 4505 at Costco in January. I don't know if they have their jalapeno flavor, which is my personal favorite. Um, I think I've seen it at Costco before, but I'm not 100% sure. Point is, $200, we did this. This will absolutely positively feed at least one person, if not more, especially if you get the fat content higher and you really balance it out more. Go, thank you. $50 a week at Costco, like that's unbelievable. Now this would absolutely, at least in my house, I think this would at least feed two people. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's not that hard to do. Especially if you're someone that intermittent fasts and you don't have breakfast typically, 
you can argue with me all you want and say that it's not going to be enough food, but it is because there's more than enough calories here. If we actually look at the calorie count, which is really what we're looking at, calories and protein, not just volume of food in general, we have enough and we're going to be just fine. So this would perfectly feed two people. The nice thing about the ketogenic diet is you don't need a large volume of food to stay satiated. So anyhow, as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. Thanks for being a part of it. And I will see you tomorrow. Hey, so kind of fun. So we shopped at Costco. Now, just for the heck of it, we're going to cook up some of this stuff just to add a little bit of a different flair. So get ready. We're going to make something delicious and a little bit weird with what we got at Costco. So let's ground beef. Pop one egg into there. Okay, now check this out. We're going to take some of these guys. Put them four, five, four, oh, five pork rinds. Crumple those guys into it. And then I'm going to mix and mash that up. That's almost like adding breadcrumbs. I'm going to add a few more. Put a little bit of this Pecorino Romano in there. That is the best cheese. Yeah. This is an elote seasoning from, or everything but the elote seasoning from Fair Joe's. Yeah. A little bit of cheating there, but. Yeah. Cauliflower rice that we got. Sauerkraut. Just a little flavor while it's steaming. Mm -hmm. mm. yeah. I am not a cook, but I'll make it work. That is the way a keto burger should look. So added some Brussels sprouts to this cauliflower rice. Trader Joe's makes this awesome roasted broccoli, like that. I don't have a bunch of veggies. I was talking about it in the grocery haul when I was saying it works out great because you can drizzle it or spray it evenly to add a little bit of flavor to it. Look at that. Oh, wow. that. Uh -huh. Let's go to town. That buffalo sauce did it. The sauerkraut needs to be mixed with the veggies. That's a good taste. Not so much on the burger.